said How's I'm afraid going? of these chairs. So if I fall, don't make fun of me. There you so go. So first off, why were we at the Super Bowl last night? I was expecting to see you with Katy Perry singing fireworks. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, no, that was not going to happen. <laughs> I still love that scene. Did everyone see the interview, I'm assuming? Oh, thanks. Thank you. But first, I wanted to talk about the show, Fresh okay. Off the Boat. Tell me about the development of this and where it all came about. Well, that would be this guy, the executive um, producer. I, I, read a, I read Eddie's book. We have a, a mutual friend, another, another writer named Jay Kang, who sent me the galley uh, months before it was published. And there was something about Eddie's writing, the specific nature of like just every detail about growing up in America, being Chinese-American, and it spoke to me. And, you know, uh, I have a production deal with Jake Kasdan over at 20th TV, and for one of our projects, they just said, do whatever you want. You know, let's go ahead and, and swing for the fences. And I worked up the nerve to say, how about putting a Chinese family on TV, thinking they were going to say, you're out of your mind. But um, they didn't. And everybody from 20th, uh, from Dana and Gary on down, were super supportive. And they're like, let's do it. And we optioned the book, we set it up at ABC, and here we are. It's awesome. And how was it casting? Um, how did you figure out the perfect cast? Well, we, you know, one of the things was we wanted to, you know, cast right away. Even early, early on, one of the things was let, let's just get out there and just meet people. There are a lot of Asian actors out there, and we had casting calls all over North America, you know, including uh, Toronto and Vancouver, just to look for, you know, the Lewis role, which ultimately, you know, Randall got, and then uh, Constance Wu, who's brilliant as Jessica, and the kids. We had to find the kids. So we ended up with Hudson Yang, who is in Brooklyn, or from Brooklyn, and these two other kids we found in Arcadia, California, where all the Chinese people are, so. <laughs> and so how did you get involved, and what was that like kind of jumping in and figuring out this family dynamic with all of you? Uh, well, I was uh, actually the first person to get cast in it, so uh, I got a call from Melvin uh, to be in a movie that he was working on with Jay Kasdan, yeah. and it was shooting in Boston. Uh, the, the movie Sex Tape, and they called me just to do a scene. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, I'd been a big fan of his for a really long time, and, you know, we'd never worked together, but he worked a lot with, like, a mutual friend, Nick Stoller, and I just, we, we had this one role, which was, wasn't too bad. It was one day, being a scene yeah, with Cameron Diaz and Rob Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> and he flew all the way across the country, and by lunchtime that day, I looked over at Jake and said, I think he's Lewis Wong. And he said, yeah, get him. So... <laughs> Um, so he shows up at my trailer. Yeah, at lunch. Yeah, and at lunchtime, I'm in my trailer, he knocks on the door, and I open the door, and he has this book, fresh off the boat, and like puts it in my face. He's like, read this. And uh, I was already familiar, I knew what the book was, like, I had heard about the book, and I was like dying to read the book. And uh, I started reading it, and I thought the book was incredible, and it really spoke to me, and, uh, and I really identified with so much of it. And uh, Melvin's like, we're going to develop this into a show. And I was like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> good luck. Uh, and I found out they were making, going to make a pilot. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, wow, are you actually making a pilot? Yeah. And uh, they got me involved in the, the casting kind of process. I, you know, I, Yeah, we, we cast Randall without a script, yeah. which sort of speaks to just everybody at the studio network just believing in the thing. Like we said immediately, Randall Park, and the, the reaction was, we love Randall. Yes, let's cast him. And uh, he was a huge part of it. We, we started sort of casting around him. You know, we, we, when we met Constance, she had just Who amazing, is so brilliant, so brilliant in the show. Yeah. Yeah, she's you incredible. You have a great chemistry. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I love her. She's, she's yeah. so funny. And, and, then, and then the kids, too. Searching for the kids. Yeah. And the toughest piece was finding our Eddie. That was like mm -hmm. the longest search. And they cast a very wide net. Yeah, and um, this kid comes in, and he was just so charming. He just walks in, and I, I cause I was reading with with the the different kids, you know, and uh, I, I swore this kid did not care whether or not he got this job. He was just like, <laughs> he just had this, he just could care less. He just had this swagger about him. Yeah, I was gonna and say, did he have the swag? Cause that's a huge part yeah. of Eddie's character. He completely did, in yeah. in, a, in a way that you're just like. Is he gonna show up tomorrow? <laughs> like, like, all right, but <laughs> that's awesome. But 
Yeah, and he was like a real, I mean, yeah. all the other kids were great too, and they, they were, but they were very polished, well-trained actors, yeah. very polite, yeah. you know, yeah. whereas Hudson was just... Embodied Eddie in such a real way. That yeah, just, like Eddie is, uh, Eddie Huang, the real Eddie is such a unique, just dynamic person, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and this kid, uh, he totally captured Eddie in so many ways. And, uh, you know, this is the first show in 20 years to focus on an Asian-American family. So this must have been a huge deal for you guys. Like, how does that make you feel that this show is actually, it's out there, it's going to be on Wednesday, you guys should check it out. Um, what are your thoughts on that? My, for me, it's like, it's amazing. It's like, well, every step of the way, it was like a surprise, you know. Like, when he told me yeah. they're going to make it in a pilot, I was like, wow, really? This is, like, amazing, you know. And then... When he said, we got picked up the series, I was like, oh my God, are you serious? We got picked up the series? Yeah. That was like, my mind was blown. And now I'm seeing the billboards everywhere. Like they're actually promoting this show. And it's like, it's a dream come true on so many levels for it's me. It's a total dream come true. Yeah, like it's, just, you know. You, you always sort of think being Asian American, working in you know the film and TV business, like you would want to do something like this. You want to sort of, you know, Give, be given the opportunity and like we, we actually are and it's it's really cool I hope this is the first in many I hope it's not that special anymore after this yeah. you know so it should be the mainstream and how I know Eddie wrote a piece for New York magazine where he talked about the process yeah. and how that was um, what is it difficult to make a show where you want to focus on the family aspect yeah. of it but we all know this is a, re a re remarkable thing having yeah. Asian Americans be the focus yeah um, kind of tell me about that. Was there some bitterness there? Or? I mean, I think it's really hard to make a show in general. Mm -hmm. And for Eddie, who hadn't been in the system at all, hadn't, you know, dealt with scripted TV at all, like, it must be horrible to watch your life turn into a sitcom. I, I don't envy it on anybody. It's just, it's, it's a difficult, difficult thing. And I think he's had quite a year. And he's come out the other side, like, excited and happy, just like us. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, he realizes how big this is. And it's all because of him. He wrote a book. His life started all of this. It's the inspiration for it all. And, uh, you know, could have happened without him. And how does that feel to come in and play his on-screen dad? Those are some big shoes to fill. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, uh, you know, I... <clears throat> We haven't seen like we haven't seen anything like this in 20 years, you know, and and just uh, my like background, like when I was in college, I, I uh, or in graduate school, I actually got a master's in Asian American studies. I like you know it was a big part of my life, you know. So to be able to be a part of something so significant to the community, but not just to the community, but just something just in in TV history, yeah. something so so. Unique. It's it's been like amazing, yeah. I know there was a little bit of controversy last week with a, a Twitter promo that went out, um, and I think it was taken down pretty much immediately. Um, are you guys nervous about all this stuff that can possibly go wrong? Or I mean, uh, you know, I think I think it was a mistake, and I think there were the best intentions behind it. They tried to do some sort of visual that encapsulated the theme of it, but like at the end of it, I think. It just shows that more shows like this, like Cristela, like Blackish, should just be on the air. And, you know. Yeah, when we were at the TCAs, which is uh, the Critics Association yeah. kind of panel, yeah. where we kind of introduce all, you know, the networks come and introduce yeah, yeah. all the new shows. We had the entire cast up here like this, and, and the, the, the reporters kind of asked questions. And the yeah. first question was, hey, I really, uh, I really love your show. Yeah. I, I love that there were things like chopsticks in it. Uh, is your show going to become more Americanized, or are you going to keep the chopsticks? <laughs> and I was like, this is why we need our yeah, show. Like, <laughs> I felt really bad for her, because I think it, she came from a, the question came from a good place. It was just like, legitimately love the show. <laughs> yeah, she loved the show. But it was like, we, I, I feel like it's important to have more diversity and more different perspectives mm -hmm. and more different kinds of people represented in TV so that, you know, people can see kind yeah. of that we're more of, uh, you know, there's more to us than chopsticks, right, you know? Right. 
Exactly. And the first episode focuses a lot on Eddie's first day at his new school mm -hmm. and how uh, white people food is Lunchables. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty great. Um, so how was it filming all that, though? Um, I know it's based in the 90s. Um, can you relate any of your personal experiences to that that you brought to the set? Well, that happened to me. Like, it's, I remember as a kid going to school, you know what I'm talking about. You could, <laughs> yeah, my parents would pack me lunch. And, you know, my parents are Korean, and it, yeah. it would be like a, a Korean lunch. Yeah. And I remember bringing it to school and open, literally, just like yeah. in the show, opening it up, and, like, everyone around me just like, what <laughs> the hell is that? And just feeling super embarrassed, you know. Yeah, I really wanted to get Lunchables. It was a big thing. <laughs> like, I was at, I, I went and to the market with my mother and begged for them, and she just would not get them for me. <laughs> but also growing up in the 90s, too, well, I, I'm more of like an 80s kid, but, but I, you know, I was around in the 90s and just being super into rap music, and that's like an obsession of, of Eddie's as yeah. well, and, it, and that's covered in the show, and I think that's super cool. Yeah, yeah that's kind of nice. There was a, there's a moment in the lunchroom where there's some name calling that goes on. And it, when I was watching it, I kind of stopped in my tracks, and I think that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, can you tell me about that? I know Eddie said that was one of the most profound moments in his childhood that he remembered. Yeah, I, I mean, mentioned. that was one of the things when I read the book that really struck me, because I grew up in sort of a similar situation. It wasn't all Caucasian people, but it was, uh, I grew up in a predominantly Lat Latino neighborhood. And it was tough being the only Chinese kid. And, you know, kids are mean. They call you names. And, like, you know, in reading the book, that moment really connected with me. And I thought, like, this is the first time that I've read something by an Asian American author that really talks about those specific things, those details, and, like, what it feels like, and how he's sort of come out through the other side now because of it. And, you know, I spent a long time sort of dealing with that stuff, dealing with how I grew up and, you know, and, and what it sort of means to me now. And it was part of the reason why I think we're here now. Like, it's just powerful stuff, you know? And that's where the best stories come from. And yeah. yeah. As a kid, I mean, I, I never got called a chink like he does in the, in, in yeah. the show, but I've been called Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, whatever, like, guy was out in the movies at the time, <laughs> Harold, you know, I'd be called like all types of names like that. And, and uh, that moment in the show, in the pilot is, uh, yeah, it, it's a very powerful moment. And, uh, and it really, really connected, you know, with me and uh, hopefully it'll connect with a lot of people. Yeah. This show is about a family. So tell me, how is this family gonna pull us all in? Why should we watch them on TV? Well, I mean, the family, I mean, there's so many things about this family that are relatable, of course. You know, it, it's a family, and uh, we all come from families, you yeah. know. But there's also a lot of things that are uh, very specific about the family, too, you know, and unique to this family, mm -hmm. and, and that make this family special and, and interesting and, and, uh, and watchable, you know. Um, and I, ultimately, the show is, it's a funny show. It's a funny show yep. where, where we're not the butt of the joke, you know? It's actually, we're seeing, we're, we're seeing the world through the pers from the perspective of the family mm -hmm. out onto the world, as opposed to, you know, the one Asian character on the yeah. side yeah. who's kind of the butt of all the jokes or the, you know, the things that I've seen, especially yeah. in my acting journey, you yeah. know? It's, 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 uh, it's, it's exciting. It's a unique point of view. Yeah. We've never seen it on television before. It, it's really kind of cool. You know. and I think it'll be great with all the um, modern family and blackish. Yeah. And I know ABC has always had shows with diverse characters, Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder, Scandal. So I think you're in a, a good group there. But I also want to touch on the interview, of course. The what? The interview. <laughs> Um, <laughs> tell me about that. When you, when you read that script... I had a script, feeling the interview was coming. <laughs> <laughs> when you read that script, did you have any idea that it would cause this much, much commotion? No. <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, I, 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 when I read it, I thought it was definitely uh, provocative and, you know, possibly controversial, but I didn't expect 
to be on the news every day, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, none of us expected that. Yeah, it was, it was insane. So tell me about the actual experience filming it, because I know backstage you were telling me it was pretty awesome to work with James Franco and do all those crazy scenes with him yeah. and Katy Perry. I mean, it was like, it was really, I had the time of my life. I mean, it was definitely, as far as uh, movies go, or really anything, it was like the biggest part, uh, role, as, you know, as far as like my ability to kind of play the, the gamut of emotions and, and to really like dig deep into a character, you know, and, and, and have fun with, with, with playing one character in one project. It was really exciting, you know, on top of that, being able to work with, uh, yeah, James and Seth and Evan. I mean, they were just so amazing to work with. Uh, so I had a blast and I was super excited for people to, to see, you know, this movie you know, because I love the movie. Uh, I just had no idea that there, <laughs> there would be a moment where possibly no one would ever see the movie. You know? <laughs> like, this is my big break. <laughs> I was like, my, yeah, I mean, it was like crazy, but um, thankfully people got to see it. I feel like more people have probably seen it now, now that it's on Netflix, um, which is a great thing. Yeah, yeah. And I know awesome. you can probably talk about this too. How do you feel about Netflix and all these shows competing with network shows for Emmys and Golden Globes? I mean, I sort of feel like it's kind of great. I mean, there's a, there are certain shows that I think you sort of binge watch, and Netflix is a very good way to do that. And then there are other things, you know, like network sitcoms that uh, I think, you know, sort of live in that world where, you know, you have it on, it's like, your, your, your friend every week that you have come over to your house, you know? And I, I think it, it's fascinating and cool, and I think, you know, there's room for all of it, you know? I would love to make a Netflix show. Yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> um, I guess we can open it up to the floor for some questions. You mentioned that this was the first show of its type in a couple of decades. Have you spoken to Margaret Cho at all about this project? Yeah, she's great. We've exchanged emails. She's really good friends with Eddie. Um, and she couldn't be more supportive and just like a godmother to us all. Yeah. Hi, um, I guess this is a question for both of you. Um, I noticed that both your character and um, Eddie's mom all both have accents. And I was wondering what what like how you guys came to the conclusion that like that these two parents were going to have accents even though we already know that they're immigrants what was the decision making process behind that i think um that a lot of that had to do with the fact that uh, the actual parents do have accents I and mean, we actually went out to orlando and met eddie's uh, real parents and we got to know them and spent a few days with them, and, and uh, I think it's as simple as that. Yeah. I mean, it's that, and I sort of related it to my own parents, where they've been in this country for 50 years, and my mom has a very sort of Americanized accent. It's very slight, but my father, same amount of time, but nobody can understand what he's saying. <laughs> so, you know, and I think accents are sort of, you know, unique and you know, subjective and just sort of to the individual. You know? Yeah, and that's the cool thing about Eddie's it. Eddie's dad know? does not have that strong of an yeah. accent, so I tried not to have that strong yeah. of an accent, kind of yeah. just to reflect that, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah it's just kind of more uh, a reflection of the, the real yeah. people. Yeah. Hi, Randall. Hi, Melvin. Uh, I'd like to start by saying I love Lunchables. <laughs> um, Randall, I love you and Veep. And while oh, and out, you. I think you Thanks were fantastic. So I love that the world knows who you are. Oh, man. It's about I really time. Appreciate it. I um, appreciate it. And for me, I love the interview. I thought you were the best part of the entire movie. And I needed to know what, what scene was the hardest to, to film because I feel like you were just so hysterical. There had to be moments where you couldn't contain your, uh, your emotion. You had to laugh and let it out. <laughs> well, you know, ironically, the hardest part for me to film was. Uh, if you've seen the movie, it's the kind of one moment where I start actually revealing my true self and I start kind of, I'm drunk and my friends, my guards had, had been, uh, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but 
I'm basically in a very bad emotional state, and that's when James Franco, for the first time, sees that I could be a little bit crazy, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I start screaming, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and just kind of going nuts. And that was really, that was a tough uh, scene for me to film because that was my first day of shooting. So my first day in, I had to kind of go there right away, you know? Um, but as far as like kind of containing laughter and, and trying not to, I mean, that was throughout the movie. I mean, those guys are just so funny, you know? So uh, it, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. But the most challenging scene was probably that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have time for one more question. Well, I have a question. So I actually want to know, did you have the freedom to play with your character a little bit? and create him the way you imagined him? Or was it straight, did you read the memoir and really get into Eddie's dad's head? Um, I think it was, uh, I mean, a, a little bit of both, a little bit of everything. I mean, there, there was that memoir and, 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 and having met Eddie's dad. And, you know, at the beginning especially, I was very obsessed with listening to his, his dad. So I would record the audio of his dad talking and, and and from various things and just kind of really try to get into, you know, into uh, knowing the actual person. But then at the same time, you know, the scripts kind of point you into a direction of how to play the character, what kind of the person the character is. And then, then of course, as an actor, you bring in, you know, a, a little bit of yourself here and there. And, and uh, so I, I think every character is kind of, in, in any project, is kind of a group effort, you know. But, um, but uh, I, I feel like, uh, in many ways, like I, I wanted to keep the spirit of, of at least some aspects of the actual Lewis, you know, that I met. And while we were out in uh, Orlando, he actually took us to the original restaurant that uh, that Cattle uh, Cattleman's Ranch. Ranch. <laughs> yeah, he took us. It's, it's now a Hooters, by the way, but. <laughs> But he took I was going to say. <laughs> he took us to, yeah, he took us to the restaurant, and I noticed, like, he, he, while we were there, like, all these people would come out of the woodwork just to shake his hand. I mean, yeah. he was, like, he was loved yeah. by the, the community, yeah, like you know? somebody who's a manager of the Hooters, I think, or something, yeah, or something around he, there who used to be his busboy. He was like the really mayor cool. of Orlando, basically. <laughs> and, Which, on the show, I feel like that's what you're going to be, because well, you're a very yeah, lovable exactly. character. I mean, and the, well, that was something about the, you know, the character is very different from, from the, uh, the, the real Lewis and, and, and the real Lewis in the book. There, but one thing that I was able to really hold on to was that moment. Uh, when we were there in front of the restaurant and just seeing how loved this guy was and how much he, he got along yeah. with everybody, you know. And that's uh, something you definitely see in the character on the show. Yeah. Well, I have big hopes for the show, and I think everyone should tune in on Wednesday. It's really funny. Uh, and thanks, guys, for joining us. Thank this you. Fun. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>